good afternoon honorable speaker distinguished guest students and dear audience i hope you are doing excellent even during this pandemic myself arman jahan ibha i am a member of ieee ias dvt student branch chapter i offer my regards to all the people joining us it is a moment of extreme pleasure to welcome the respected teachers and all the participants who are present here to attend to this event to this highly increasing competitiveness over the industry demands high quality and most consistent products with a competitive price to address this challenge a number of industries are considering various new products design and integrated manufacturing techniques in parallel with the use of automated devices industrial automation uses control system and equipment such as computer software and robots to perform tasks that were historically done manually in today's factories and shop floors industrial automation is everywhere and it is difficult to imagine a production line without automation keeping these things in mind i typically ias bbt student branch chapter in collaboration with i typically bbt student branch chapter have organized an amazing workshop on industrial automation we are extremely happy to inform you that i typically bbt student branch chapter is growing big rapidly we would like to share a short introduction of our chapters under ieee bbt student branch chapter i am requesting to present the introduction video of ieee bbt student branch and its all chapters and councils thank you so much today we have samsuddin ahmed sir assistant professor of department of csc and the advisor of ieee ias bbt student branch chapter i request sir to introduce our honorable speaker so that we can proceed with the session assalam alaikum sir thank you so uh, thank you arman eva for Inviting me to introduce our expert person today. So, uh, Mr. Engineer Khandar Marsu is our honourable research person. He is the managing director of Reliance Hitech Limited, Dhaka. He also experienced uh, experienced in working as a senior professional here in in Hitech Bangla Limited, and 
uh, he uh, has been graduated from uh, Jahanginagar University. Uh, he's a master's of uh, information technology. So uh, I hope uh, you will get benefited from his speech today. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Now I request to present the introduction video of today's event. so much. We also have Dr. Muhammad Kiros Pridha sir with us today. Thank you so much sir for joining us. Sir, if you have any expectations or thoughts about today's event, please share with us. We also have Dr. Muhammad Kiros Pridha sir with us today. Thank you so much sir for joining us. Sir, if you have any expectation or thoughts about today's event, please share with us. Thank you. Yeah, am I audible? Yes, sir. Thank you. I, at first, I would like to welcome Pondakar Marcus for his valuable time and also the IT Kuli student branch of UBT for arranging this type of current need. Uh, topics, the industrial automation, that would be very, very important for us because for, uh, for our automation system, also, also industrial system should be fully automated that can help us for productivity and also for the communication with the first world country. So this would be a very excellent uh, talk and excellent workshop for all of us. Thank you all for ending this type of workshop. Thank you so much, sir. We also have Eski Hasibur Alam, sir, lecturer of Department Tripoli. Sir, can you hear me? Now I would like to welcome our speaker once again and request him to start his demonstration. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, I think uh, I'm audible. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you, uh, IEEE student branch, branch BUBT, and thanks uh, our honorable teachers and mentors for organizing such type of uh, program. So today <laughs> we'll discuss about the our topics is industrial auto automation. So time is very short. We have only one hour time in our hand. So we will, uh, I will try my best to today discuss about the industrial automation and what are the different parts of automation and what are the different uh, items and instrumentation that is using in the automation uh, in this class. So I hope we will enjoy the class. And if you have any question, you can ask the question uh, anytime in chat box. I will also check, check, uh, check the chat box and in the, Last session, we have the open discussion. So at that session, you can also ask your question in the audio format. Thank you so much. So uh, my introduction already given uh, by one of the honorable mentors. So I'm just uh, giving short uh, of my introduction again. Uh, I have completed my graduation from Ruet uh, from the Tripoli background and I have completed masters and I have completed my MBA from India. This is actually the uh, main uh, education. And after that, I have uh, taken different uh, industrial training from different places like India uh, and different places I have got the training. These are my short summary. And uh, I'm a managing director of Reliance High Tech Limited and also our company name people uh, know by PLC Bangladesh. So Reliance High Tech Limited is mainly doing automation uh, of different industries and automation of machine in different industries. And we have some uh, big, big supplier like Bangladesh Autonomous Factory. 
and we have also a training center and in our training center more than 1000 students already passed from our training center and they are doing a job in different country and different situation as a maintenance engineer automation engineer okay. this is the uh, most of our brands uh, this, and this is our clients this is our clients and uh, bangladesh ordnance factory is our big client we are supplying machine all all over the year Okay, this is our training center in Dhaka, Mirpur, and we have a lot of foreigner and a lot of local students join here to get the training. This is a few picture of our training center, and this is our training panel that already you shown, and I'm now in the training center. And <clears throat> this is a few of our students giving connection to the panel and etc. So few questions uh, to all of the participant. You can write in chat. Uh, can you please tell me uh, from which background maximum of you joined today? Uh, like Tripoli, ME, CSC, EC. You can write in uh, chat. I, I can check. check. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, I see maximum students uh, from Tripoli and CSC and some students also from different department. Okay, so first this slide is regarding on the automation industries. So what are the main automation industries in the world? So number one is the automobile and number two, electronics, heavy manufacturing, packaging, aerospace and defense, process industries, oil and gas, chemical, pulp and papers, mining and metal. These are the most common industries all over the world. They are using the industri <coughs> industrial automation technology. And there is a photo of some uh, in industrial automation technology they are using. This is the automation industries. And this is a process industry. They are using the automation, industrial automation. And what are the <clears throat> job sectors for industrial automation engineer? So some, some people doing job in the product, automation product manager, some people join in the project management, some people join the automation application engineer, some people in the field system, and some people as a PLC programmer. These are the main, main job and the people are doing in different industries and different field. So what are the main automation job responsibilities? Uh, job responsibilities mainly diagnostics, the machine, mechanical maintenance, PLC programming, electrical wiring, and repair, maintain of instrumentation. These are the main automation job responsibilities. Okay, now we will just go to the main portion of the automation sector. Today, we will introduce you about uh, what are the side and what are the different items and uh, instrumentation we are using for the automation. So after today's class, you will get some idea about what is industrial automation, what is PLC, what is SCADA, what is DCS, what are the different items of the industry. You will get a little idea about those items. So I'm just starting. So industrial automation, <coughs> we are mainly dividing the industrial automation. in four categories. Number one is the logic control section. Number two is the motion control. Number three is the display control. And number four is the process instrumentation. Okay, so logic control, we can uh, categorize into two categories. One is large automation. And sometimes we can say it is electrical automation. And uh, other part is the embedded system that sometimes people using in the microcontroller, Arduino, sometimes they're using small projects. So these are two uh, uh, system of two controller of automation. One is the PLC SCADA DCS part and other part is the embedded system that is microcontroller Arduino all, all this part. So in industry, uh, electrical automation system is mainly using 
so PLC is kind of DCC using because there are some uh, problem and uh, some issues for that reason we cannot use this embedded system in industry but we can use this you know university or our small projects we can use that so what are the main problems or what are the main reasons uh, why we are not using this embedded system in the industry so now I'll discuss about that so my voice is clear if my voice is not clear I can also change the headphone I have different type of headsets from here. So can you hear me clearly? You can uh, write in chat. I can get the answer. If I'm not clear, I can change the headphone. Okay, then thank, okay, thanks. <coughs> and I am using a conference microphone. You, you see, this is the conference microphone. And we have also different uh, microphone for the class. Okay, so first one is the environment. If you think about the industrial environment, industrial environment is not actually good like our home or like our uh, office. Industrial in environment is different from our uh, normal environment. Like we are working in the different uh, steel industry. You heard the name of steel industry like BSRM, RSRM. These are the re-rolling mills. When we, uh, in the re-rolling mill, we need around 1400 degrees centigrade to 1500 degrees centigrade to melt the mild steel. They are just, uh, they are just importing the billet from the abroad and they are melting this uh, metal, uh, mild steel, and they are uh, making different shape. So if you consider of a steel mill, they have the huge temperature. 14, 1400 degrees centigrade is not a small temperature. That is a big temperature. So if you can go other industries like textile industries, they have another problem of uh, there is always uh, dust everywhere and uh, there is always uh, uh, dust and the moisture is everywhere because uh, they have uh, the cotton and fabrics, everything. So there is also problem of that, that kinds. And we are working in the uh, Gaji tank or this type of industry, tire industries, they are making the items from the carbon. So if you go to their industries, everywhere you will see the carbon. Carbon is just flying everywhere. So this type of industries, lots of environmental problem is there. So if I use Arduino, microcontroller that you have already heard. So what will happen? They just uh, in the in the circuit. Normally what happens, this dust, this moisture, and, and this item uh, comes and uh, the circuit damage or burn. So uh, this, uh, for this region, uh, embedded system or Arduino microcontroller, these are not used in the industry. Second is the communication. Communication is the most important part of industry. So PLC and industrial automation item, uh, they are supporting all the uh, common communication protocol like Wi-Fi, uh, fiber, all the combination protocol they support. But if you consider of Arduino microcontroller, they only support few combination like USB and other things. And another part is the voltage. Voltage, industrial voltage is 24 volt, but electronic voltage is 5 volt. So Arduino microcontroller, they are mainly the voltage of 5 volt, but industry, we need the 24 volt DC uh, for controlling system. So PLC and other, other item, they, they are 24 volt and they match with the industrial voltage. And, the, uh, and another one is the troubleshooting. You know, when we import a machine from industry, so there are a lot of uh, troubleshooting we needed. Like we just import a machine from Canada. So what happened? Uh, we, we did some, uh, we, we also faced some problem. So once we uh, import a machine from Canada in an industry, so what happened? So after just running the machine, uh, we see that a machine is shut down after one hour and half an hour. So what happened? So we check the uh, Canadian uh, machine manufacturer, they provide a heater, heater inside the cabinet of the compressor. So why they provide heater? Because Canada, their temperature is always minus. So it should not be uh, ice. So they uh, fix the heater. But in our industry, our environment, the temperature is always 25. 25 is the uh, winter temperature. Normal temperature is 30, 32, 35. And the, summer season it crosses the 35 sometimes so this season we actually needed the air condition not the heater so what happened people want to start the uh, uh, compressor but it st st stopped so what we have to do we just open the cabinet door and fix a fan 
to make it cool. But what is the logic? When we open compressor door, the compressor automatically shut down because there is a logic inside this. There is a, a logic inside the compressor that if door is open, the compressor must be stopped because uh, there is a, some rotating parts that rotating parts uh, can make harm to human body or any animal. So they give the safety. So what I have to do? I have to change the program and download again to, to uh, remove the safety. So when we import a machine from uh, different countries or <coughs> different industries, we, we, we have to make a lot of troubleshooting on that machine. And this is the new machine. But if I think of a machine after five years, 10 years, then we also need lots of uh, modification and lots of troubleshooting work. So PLC uh, or SCADA, this part, we can upload all the program from the machine. We can change everything and you can download it. So troubleshooting is very easy. But if I make a machine with the microcontroller Arduino, we cannot upload the program. So if we cannot upload the program, we cannot troubleshooting or we cannot do the modification. But these Arduino uh, microcontroller, they are also using. What it is using? It is using mainly home appliances, like you have an oven, like you have air condition in a home. Your air condition must have some knowledge, uh, must have some logic. What is the logic behind this? Uh, well, if you set the temperature 24 degrees centigrade, when the temperature re reaches 24 degrees centigrade, the compressor will stop. S uh, same way while we start the oven and we give the time. And that is, uh, I, ju I just entered the 30 second time. What happened? After 30 second, oven will stop. They have the logic, but that logic uh, need not to change anymore. That logic is all uh, already in, inside there and it will, it will never need to change. But in the steel machine, we have a lot of uh, items that need to change. So for this problem, uh, mainly PLC is using in the industry. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, so now we are on the industrial logic control part. The industrial logic control first important uh, controller is the PLC. So how we organize the machine and the program. So this is just a machine. I'm just showing this is a machine. And th these are the PLCs. These are connected to the machine. And this PLC is controlling the machine. So if any problem in the PLC, so machine will be stopped and if we get any problem in the machine, we will get feedback in the PLC. So normally what we do, we just connect the programming cable. This is called the programming cable. We just connect the programming cable and we, with the laptop. So laptop, we have the programming software. This is the programming software. So what we do, we just go that PLC is there. We just upload the machine program to my laptop. Then I can see the program here and I just adjust and modify the modification needed. And then again, we download the PLC. So according to the PLC, the machine will run according to the logic of the PLC. Okay, these are the common practice of a PLC system machine. Okay, so uh, in our uh, large automation system, we have seen that there are actually three kinds of automation. Like one is PLC, SCADA, and DCS. Now I'll discuss what are the SCADA and what are the DCS. Okay. So normal PLC based machine, they have one PLC and one machine. But consider if you have a power plant, if you have a plant, like this is a plant. Okay. So if you have a plant, then the, uh, if you have a plant, then it is consisting of multiple machines. Like if I considering a power plant. So what is inside the power plant? So power plant, they have different, different units. Like one unit, you can say that boiler unit. Uh, one unit, you can say that it is the it is the turbine unit. One unit, you can say the generation unit. Different different unit unit is there. So what happened? So this small unit, the one of the unit is more more bigger than a single machine, but they must be combined. They are close loop. Like I'm giving an example. Like we also work in different power plant and we also develop PLC for the different power plant. Okay, so what is the logic behind this? Like, I'm just uh, generating electricity for the uh, grid. 
for the national grid because you know all the electricity is coming uh, connected to the national grid and from the national grid uh, uh, the electricity is supplied all over the bangladesh so while we we are connecting or while we are supplying our electricity to the national grid what is the requirement we must have the same voltage and the same frequency if the frequency and the voltage is not same we cannot supply to the grid so who is making this frequency who is responsible for the frequency uh, actually the rotation rpm of turbine is responsible for the frequency if the rotation of turbine and uh, rotation of turbine rpm is increased the frequency will increase if, if the rpm uh, decreases then the uh, frequency of electricity will decrease so who is mainly controlling the turbine rpm so steam 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 flow steam flow just hit the blade of the turbine and just uh, turbine rotate so <laughs> generation frequency dependent on the turbine flow rpm and turbine rpm is dependent on the steam flow and steam flow is dependent on the boiler and this way that means uh, what i am uh, trying to understand uh, that what i am trying to understand they are just a closed loop one is connected to the another so in that cases when there is a more than one unit then mainly you are using the scada or the dcs so what is the difference between scada and dcs this is a uh, picture of dcs and this is a, a, a picture of scada okay so when there is a scada so what happened so normally uh, every each and every unit there is a plc uh, each and every unit like uh, uh, there is like one boiler unit one turbine unit one generation unit in every unit they have the plc and all the plc is combined with the software the software name is scada and if i use the okay i'm just uh, saying the full meaning of scada scada is the supervisory control and data acquisition if you search over the net uh, google you will uh, get the full meaning of scada and what is the dcs this is the distributed control system uh, so uh, for the scada in different unit we are using the plc but for dcs we are using the dcs controller like we have four unit or five unit in every unit we are using the dcs controller like dcs controller one dcs controller two dcs controller three and they are combining with a master controller and master controller is controlling all the unit so that unit some item can control by then that unit and some item can be, uh, can be done by combined master uh, master dcs so what is the difference between the scada and dcs if we use the controller as plc then it is called scada and if you if you don't use the plc rather you use the dcs controller then we can say this is the dcs controller but every dcs and scada system uh, we must have a computer connected and uh, there is a several computer one computer you can say that server computer and some other operating station some other engineering station all these items are available there so in a short uh, i can say that uh, plc we use a small machine not a small machine you can say that that machine also be large but uh, not in a plant uh, when there is a plant we must use a scada or dcs so what is scada uh, i am showing a difference uh, between plc scada and dcs plc is mainly a hardware though we are programming with with a software but plc itself is a hardware and the scada scada is mainly the software so what is the hardware or what is the controller of scada controller or hardware of scada is the plc so if we think of the scada then we can say that plc plus scada means a scada plant okay so plc is the hardware and uh, scada is a only software and scada plant is a combination of plc and scada and the dcs dcs is the uh, uh, compact system where the software and the hardware hardware is called dcs controller so where mainly we are using this uh, this uh, this three system so when there is a input output combination is less than 1000 that means small machine where is in the plc but when it is beyond that when input output is more than 1000 then we are using the scada and dcs so downtime 
if there is a downtime in a machine, like we have a textile machine, like we have a garments machine or any man man manufacturing machine, if it is shut down, then what happened? Not so much dangerous because if it is shut down, the production will be less or production will be stopped, but it will not do so much harm. But if you think, uh, think of a power plant, when if a power plant shut down, so what will happen? We cannot start power, power plant just a switch press because to start a power plant, there are a lot of arrangement, a lot of items needed. So if a power plant is shut down and if we want to start it again, it will take uh, sometime 10 hours, sometime 15 hours, sometime 20 hours needed to start a power plant. So uh, normal PLC machine, downtime is less than the dangerous, but SCADA DCS machine, they are the most dangerous. So they, the controller is designed in such a way that it cannot be shut down or it cannot be down for the fault of PLC or fault of SCADA. It can be down for the system fault. Like uh, I'm giving you an example of boiler. So uh, boiler, what is doing by the boiler? Boiler is making the steam from the water. So I am just increasing the heat of the boiler, but I am not uh, supplying the uh, sufficient water. So what will happen? There is an imbalance and plant may be shut down. So in these cases, plant could be shut down, no problem, but plant must not be shut, shut down with the problem of scatter analysis. And now we are uh, discussing about the price. So what are the uh, pricing of this PLC scatter analysis? PLC price is starting from the double dollar. Double dollar means $100, $200, $300, like this. That means uh, in Bangladeshi Taka, we can say that uh, it is uh, 10,000 BDT, uh, 15,000, 20,000, like this. And for the SCADA, the price is triple dollar. That means it, it, it is just a starting, not the ending. It is the price, price start from the triple dollar. That means it is start from the $1,000, $2,000, like that. In Bangla Taka, you can say 1 lakh BDT, 2 lakh BDT, like that. And the DCS, uh, I have a mistake here, sorry, it, it should be tetra dollar. DCS it starts from the tetra dollar, that means uh, $10,000, $20,000, $30,000, this is the pricing starting. So these are the common scenario all over the world, they are using this, this, this type of plant. So if a power plant is bigger, sometimes it could be used the DC system and sometimes it could be the use the SCADA system. And you know, uh, the power plant that nowadays the power plant we are using in our country, uh, like Ghurashal power plant, um, uh, Naranigans, there are some uh, power plants. And uh, you can say that there are lots of power plants. In Tongi, there is also some power plant. And all this power plant is now with the SCADA on DCS. Only few power plant, few old power plant that is mainly uh, using the manual system, but maximum power plant now converted to SCADA and DCS. So now if you have the SCADA and DCS, the, what is the uh, benefit? We can, troubleshooting is easy. We can control all the power plant sitting the same place. But in manual power plant, we cannot do the item uh, this way. Okay, so these are the main differences between PLC, SCADA and DCS. So we can take few questions. One minute, uh, according to this discussion uh, regarding this, then I will go to the next session. I'm just uh, giving you permission, uh, unmute permission. If you have any question, you can ask. I have given you unmute permission. You can unmute now. Assalamualaikum, sir. Sir, uh, so who is is more uh, dangerous, SCADA or DCS? I just want to uh, know about that. No, the question should not be like that, not dangerous. The dangerous is actually downtime dangerous. Okay. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the topics is downtime. Downtime means shutdown time. If it is shut down, uh, if, it, if, it, if it is shut down for a problem, so uh, those places use SCADA and DCS, that is dangerous. But they are not dangerous. They are the most safest item. Like uh, you have yeah, the, yeah. the AK-47. AK-47 is the safe, safest uh, arms you can say. Either you will not fire a uh, civilian people. If you fire your enemies, that is the safest, that, is, that will save you. You understand, right? OK, sir. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome.
and you can ask me any question uh, this is a friendly environment i am not actually a classical teacher uh, we are just an industry guy and we have training center and people uh, come there so you can ask uh, a question as friend not teacher actually okay uh, i think uh, there are not a lot of questions so if you have uh, questions you can also ask in the later no problem okay okay i'm going to the next part So we just discuss about this part, logic control and logic control is the some part is the large automation and some part is the embedded system. Last large automation there are a few items like PLC, SCADA, and DCS. And embedded system we are using the microcontroller or the RDP. Okay, so next is the motion control. What is motion control? Okay, here I am discussing the different part of industrial automation. So now I'll discuss about the motion control. What is motion control? That is rotate in the industry that is called motion. So what normally rotate? Uh, in normal sense, you can say motor normally rotate. Motor is the normally uh, motion part. So uh, these are the motion control devices that use in the industry. Okay, so first one is the VFD. You heard the name of VFD? Some people I think uh, heard the name of the VFD. Okay, VFD is the most most popular item that is using in the industry to control the motor. So to control a motor of a uh, control to control a speed of a motor, VFD is using all over the industry. So uh, VFD is variable frequency drive. So what is inside the VFD? You know a formula. Uh, this formula all you know. S is equal to 120F by P. You know this formula, right? Those who are in the electrical background all know this formula. S is equal to 120F by P. What is S? S is the synchronous speed of the speed of the motor. And what is F? F is the frequency. And what is P? P is the pole. So in a motor, we cannot change the pole. We can change only the frequency. So we can say that speed is proportional to frequency. So from where we get the frequency, the answer should be like that. The frequency, uh, that, that was in the last part, frequency we are getting from the RPM of the turbine. Okay, RPM of the turbine. But we don't have the turbine in our hand. We cannot change the turbine. Turbine is a part of power plant. We are sitting here. We are sitting in industry. We cannot change the turbine at So what you have to do? Normally what we do, we just make this AC, uh, alternating current AC to the DC. And then it, this DC is converted to the AC with the help of IGBT. IGBT, you know? IGBT. IGBT is insulated gate bipolar transistor. You know BGT? Can you please tell me uh, BG, what is BGT? Yes, okay. Bipolar junction time, okay. So actually, BJT is a switching device. They can switch like this. They can switch like this. BJT, MOSFET, IGBT, all are the switching devices. Like I'm just giving you an example. Uh, I have a switch. Like this is the switch. These are the industrial switch. Like this is a switch. So if I have a light of a uh, AC light, like, like I have a DC light here. This is a DC light and I have the switch. So I am uh, saying some people or one people that you just make the switching uh, 10 times or five times in a second. So what will happen? This DC light will convert it to AC and that will be five hertz frequency. So if someone uh, make this switching 10 times in a second, then we, we can say it, it is the 10 hertz. If I make it 20 times in a second, then we can uh, say it is the 20, uh, 200 hertz. So is it, is it not possible for a human to make the switching 200 times in a second? But 
these devices like BJT, BJT, MOSFET, and IGBT, they can make this like this. They can make the uh, switching like this way. So normally in a uh, IGBT, they can make uh, 400 Hertz frequency. That means in one second, they can switch 400 times. So this way, the DC current is converted to AC current. And this frequency is controlled by the VFD CPU. VFD, it has a, a CPU. Uh, OK, I am showing you the VFD. Okay, this is the VFD, okay? This is the VFD and the side, uh, this is the motor. This is the motor and this is the VFD. And this VFD, it can create around uh, zero to 400 hertz. And these are using in the different industry. So VFD is using mainly to control the AC motor. If you think of controlling a motor in, uh, in industry, you must use the VFD. Okay, and secondly, if you want to control a motor from the PLC, then also you have to use the VFD. So this is a normal scenario, how we use the VFD industry. Uh, normally there is the HMI, and this is the PLC, and this is the VFD, and this is the motor. So from HMI, we, uh, we set the different points, set the speed, so the, uh, all this feedback we get from the HMI and that HMI give command to the PLC and PLC executed to uh, execute the command in the VFD and VFD run the motor accordingly. This is the common scenario we are using in industry. Okay, so VFD is used in the uh, to control the AC motor and VFD not only control the speed of the motor but also it uh, working in uh, different items like it saves the motor, it saves the electricity. Okay, like you heard the name the, that air condition, some air condition nowadays, they are producing an air condition that is inverter type air condition. You heard the name of the inverter type. So that inverter is same like uh, this VFD. Actually, uh, our classical air condition, what happened? Classical air condition, when temperature reached the set point, like I'm, uh, I make the set point 25 degrees centigrade, and now temperature is 30. When the temperature is uh, just decrease, 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 and it reaches the 25 degrees centigrade, the compressor suddenly stop. And when again, the temperature is going up 27, 28, uh, compressor suddenly start. So what happened? You know, if a motor start and motor stop, there is huge current, uh, it takes uh, uh, for that short time, uh, like for millisecond, the current will be like uh, 1.5 to uh, two times. So for this reason, normal uh, classical air condition takes a lot of electricity. But if we think uh, of uh, if we think of uh, inverted type air condition, what happened? Inverted type air condition uh, configuration. Yeah, PLC. We are using different software like Siemens. Uh, we have TI Portal, Mitsubishi, GX, GX, GX Developer Software, Delta, WPL Software, Omron, CX1 Software. There are a lot of PLC and lots, a lot of software you are using. Okay, these are the some PLC. I am showing you the some PLC in our lab. You see the PLC, and uh, this is the Siemens PLC, first one, and the second one, second one is also Siemens S7200, and the third one is the Mitsubishi PLC, and uh, uh, the next one is the Omron PLC, and the next one is the Delta PLC, and the next one is the LS PLC. These are the most common six branded PLC using in all of the industry. So all the, all the industry, they have the different, different, uh, all the uh, PLC brand, they have different software. Okay. Okay. So uh, these are the VFD. Okay. So next one is servo drive. What is servo drive? So VFD, you can control the speed of a motor, but if we need such a motor uh, or such, such a system that I need to work very precisely, like uh, we have a pen. This is a pen. Uh, I can say this is just a marker, not a pen. A pen 
so think this is a pen so what happened if i use the matador uh, if i use a matador uh, pen ball pen you are using so in ball pen industry we work in matador and different industries so what happened there they produce the uh, this uh, pen in a long way the the pen is normally long very long like from this room to that room so there in injection molding machine the pen is producing in the long way in the last end what happening just pen is like this way cut 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 this way so pen is making a small 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 for parts so if i use the ac motor or vfd what will happen so one pen will be one pen size will be like this the second pen will be like this third pen will be like this that will happen but uh, the qc quality control quality control department will not allow any pen that will be different 1 mm or 2 mm because that is that is not a quality product quality product every each and every product must be same in the size and dimension okay so for this cases if i want a precise operation then i must use the servo drive and servo drive and the servo motor this is the picture of servo drive servo motor uh, i can show from the distance this is the servo motor and servo drive this one you see uh, this is the servo motor and the side there is a servo drive okay let's take it yeah okay and the next one is the dc drive so dc drive dc motor speed control is done by the dc drive so what the dc drive is using uh, like those industries that industries synchronization is important in that industry dc drive is using uh, like in our country uh, paper mills boshundara paper mills tanaka paper mills different paper mill industries they are using the dc drive because when the paper is made uh it was uh, more bigger and more not the thinner one so there is a roll there is a roll like this and the paper is going uh, behind the roll just like this way paper is going like this so after each roll there is a lot of rolls there so uh, paper is going one after another roll one after another roll this way so these big big rolls they are using the dc drive so why because dc motor is not dependent with the frequency because there is no frequency in the dc there is frequency is zero but the motor is controlled by the frequency you know uh, i have given you the formula s is equal to 128 by p so e speed is dependent on the frequency so why the ac motor is speed changing in our home because frequency sometimes changes but dc motor there is no frequency so e speed never changes so in that case dc motor is using like in the second uh, in our country uh, steel mills Uh, BSRM, RSRM, KSRM, uh, re-rolling mills. They are all that also making the same way. When they make the uh, steel uh, tin, uh, they are making the tin or like the uh, steel plate. They are making the same way. They have the roll, and with, uh, inside the roller, the film is going on. So in that cases, DC drive also use. Okay. So what is the soft starter? You know the back EMF. You know what is the back EMF? Can you please tell me in the uh, in the chat? Back EMF. You heard the name of back EMF? Those who are from the electrical background, you can write in the chat box. Okay. So back EMF, back EMF. Normally, uh, this is the. Uh, i can say the generator effect in the motor that is called the back emf i'm just uh, giving you a short introduction of the back emf like this is a motor and this is electricity is coming there and this way the motor is rotating so while the motor is rotating at full speed so what happened few electricity going backwards like this is 10 ampere <coughs> 10 ampere and current is coming uh, in, in the motor and like 1 ampere current is back from the motor that is the generator effect inside the motor so what is generator if we just rotate it will produce electricity that is generator what is motor if we supply the electricity 
then this will rotate. Just generator and motor is the vice versa. So who are just supplying 10 ampere current to rotate the motor and while uh, motor starts rotating, it's back some current. So rated current should be this 10 minus one. I'm just giving you an example, it is not exact data. So the nine ampere, so we can say the nine ampere is the rated current. So initially when the motor starts rotating, there is no uh, uh, back EMF current. So what happened? There is huge electricity goes to the motor and if the motor is bigger, then motor will burn if we not use any safety device. Okay, I'm just giving you another example. Like this is a motor full speed. I'm just making the motor full speed like this way. This is the hard start, just giving the full power. So what soft starter do? Soft starter is a safety device, this is a soft starter. So it changes the frequency and it starts the motor like this way. So we can say this is the five second. So when you give the power, so soft starter, uh, first it uh, give the low frequency and gradually increase the frequency. And after a few seconds, maybe five seconds or 10 seconds, it, it gives the full power. So motor never burned. So where we need this actually? We don't need this actually in the one horsepower or two horsepower or three horsepower motor. Uh, in our home, we also use the motor uh, to uh, take the water from the reserve tank to the overhead tank. So that motor is maybe uh, one horsepower, maximum two horsepower like that. But when the motor is uh, crossed beyond this horsepower, like five, six, seven horsepower, uh, then we need the safety device. So this soft starter start the motor softly to save the motor from the money. And what is star delta? Okay, this is a common picture of extra delta. In our lab, we have uh, star delta connection practical. Uh, our students normally participate in the star delta practical connection they use. And this is just a, uh, a small, this is just a small star delta connection uh, board. Uh, they, are, they, they are actually using the students, they are practical connection of star delta. Okay. So star delta also doing the same thing. They are saving the motor, but they are not actually like the uh, soft starter. Soft starter start the motor very softly, like this way. But star delta do first, it supply the motor star as a star and then the connection converted to delta and then it supply this way so what happened so fast motor gets the 220 volt and after a certain time 220 into root 3 so 380 380 or 440 okay this way uh, the star delta saves the motor from the burning. So first the motor is connected to the star and then it converted to the delta connection. And it continues with the delta connection. And this is a, uh, this is a just short picture of a star delta connection. And for a star delta connection, we need actually three or four memory conductor, one timer and a few other things. So, Maximum industry, 90% industry to save the motor, people are using the star delta. Though it is not actually uh, good like the soft starter, but it can save. But the price of star delta is very cheaper. As the price is very cheaper, uh, as you know, the star delta cost is just a cost of a three or four magnetic conductor and one timer and few switch. Mm, that uh, I can give you an example like uh, three kilowatt motor, if you want to make a star delta, and then uh, it can take uh, only 2000 or 1500 taka like only. But if you want to, um, okay, sorry, I have an emergency phone call. I just take uh, just a few minutes. Okay, I'm just continuing. So this.
okay uh, sorry for the interruption so this is the actually uh, soft data and this is the star delta so most of the industries they are using the star delta because star delta is cheaper oh okay uh, last i was in the uh, part of pricing so for a 7 kilowatt or 5 kilowatt motor and if i want to give the safety with the star delta that will cost around 2000 taka and but and uh, if i purchase a soft data that will cost around 15 to 20000 taka and if i want to purchase a vfd vfd itself has those all the safety uh, information vfd has a acceleration and deacceleration parameter then can, that can set the model but vfd price is very very high so if i want to purchase a vfd for a 0.75 kilowatt or 1 kilowatt that will cost more than 20000 so in this cases uh, most Places there we don't need the speed control, we are using the star data. But if we need the speed control, then we use the VFD. And if the speed control needed is very precise, that we use the servo drive. This is actually a servo drive is the servo motor is the equivalent motor of the stepper motor. Uh, in our people, uh, they are using the stepper motor in home projects or university projects. So, so bigger version of stepper motor is servo motor. So what is the difference between stepper motor and servo motor? Stepper motor and servo motor, they are running the same principle. Each and every frequency, every pulse, the servo motor give a rotation. But stepper motor don't have any feedback. But servo motor give feedback. So if I uh, can say that our office in the Mirpur, shout out for uh, our uh, training center. So like I am sending one guy to the Uttara. So one people calling me every time, the sir, I am in uh, uh, Mirpur 10, I am in uh, Abdullah Pur, I mean, like that, like that. So, this is the feedback. So, secondly, I'm sending another person to Uttara. He is also going to Uttara, but it never gives me any feedback. So, this is the difference. So, servo motor have feedback. And for this reason, in industrial application, we are mostly using the servo motor because we, we, we need to know the feedback, why it is, and what is the RPM, and what is the condition, what is the vibration condition, what is the torque condition. This information only we can get from the servo drive, not from the um, stepper drive. And the DC drive, we already discussed about DC drive. <coughs> and this is mostly using uh, to control the DC motor. <coughs> and soft data uh, is used to uh, give the safety of a motor. And the last one is star delta. Star delta is, is using uh, also to, uh, to give the safety of a motor. OK, there is another part. The another part is the display control. I'm going to the same slide again this slide now i am in the display control okay display control okay display control uh, we want to what is it? 4, 4 30, okay. in our industry we need to know the feedback of a machine like we have switches in our room. In every room or classroom, we have the switches, like five switches, six switches, like eight switches. We just turn on the switch or fan on, turn on the switch or projector on, turn on the switch or light on. This is a common switch. Now, think of a masjid, mosque. Think of a mosque. What happened in the mosque? If you go to a mosque, that is a big mosque, you see there are many switches together, maybe 50 or 60 switches together. So what happened? There is around 20 to 30 fan, 20 to that light, all the switch, they make it together. So I'm just uh, planning to praying here. So what I have to do? I have to uh, put on, off, on, off, on, off, all the light and fan. After certain time, after just uh, push on and off 20 or 30 times, I just can uh, successfully turn on my fan. So what's happened? I disturb all the fan. So this is the scenario. So my example is for what? If the switch is five, six, that is okay. But if the six go beyond the limit, maybe 500 switches, 600 switches, what happened? We'll make the switch in the whole workload. We can just fix HMI. If I just fix HMI, so what happened? HMI have a button or HMI have a pages, like thousands of pages we can make. We can make a pages, uh, aspect to the most. This is the first Qatar. You can say that uh, first row of the mosque. This first row, I can make a uh, turn on the first row pen. And then the next page is the second row. The third page, uh, third row, this way. And the same way, 
like Mosjid, if I give, uh, give example of mosque, that I am sitting in the first floor and I want to turn on the fan of a fourth floor. But I don't know whether the fan is on or not. What I have to do? I have to go there and I have to turn on and turn off there. But if I have the HMI, so I can uh, see the condition of the fan sitting here. That is the most important. Okay, so, so this way we can get the feedback of a, a devices. Uh, we can get the feedback of a devices. We can change the analog value, like the temperature. I'm same again inside the mosque. Like if you go to the mosque, they have different brand air condition. Because you know, the most of the mosque, the air condition and everything is a donation donated by someone. So some people donate the air condition LG, some people donate general, some people donate Walton, some people donate Gree, different, different air condition. So what happened? The Mojit people do take different uh, remote control, five or six remote controls, say turn on this uh, AC, turn on that AC. But what I can do, we can just, if I con uh, if I integrate all these things in the PLC and HMI, so from the PLC, we can set temperature of the all the air condition together. And we can also turn all these things together. So this situation, we can use the, uh, we can use the, uh, we can we, we can control the machine and we can see and we can get feedback of all the machine and I can change the analog device. I'm showing you one HMI. <laughs> Okay, I can put it together. Okay. You see, this is a HMI, and I'm making it off. Okay, there is there is another HMI. Okay, this is the HMI. Okay, this is the HMI. You can turn everything on and off this way. This way we can control the machine. Okay, check it here. And what is the OP? OP is the operator panel. Okay, so we have uh, okay HMI full meaning of the HMI is human machine interface. Okay, so this is the HMI. HMI is the human machine interface because we can say a monitor is also HMI. Why? Because uh, inside the machine, uh, on the other part of the machine, there is CPU, RAM, everything. So that is the machine, and I'm the human. So who is interfacing? The monitor is the interface. In same way, HMI is human machine interface. That means a machine and a human that make interface with the HMI. Okay, so this HMI is used all over the industry. Thousands of HMI is using in every industry. We can do everything and check the, uh, we can check the log, we can check the alarm, we can uh, modify, you can troubleshoot. All these things we can do from the HMI. So what is OP? OP is the operator panel. There are some small HMI, small devices that don't have a touch screen. Okay, what is the difference between HMI and OP? If I have the HMI, HMI must have the touch screen. They have the touch screen. But in OP, operator panel, there no need of uh, touch screen. These are the actually OP. So OP have some display and they have some button and like this. So in a small condition, we can use the OP because the OP price is cheaper than the uh, HMI. One HMI cost is uh, uh, more than 15,000, 20,000 like this, but OP you can get in the 5,000, 3,000 like this. So if we don't need many feedback or you know, if I don't need to change the analog value and uh, many stuff, then we can use the 
uh, HMI, uh, uh, then you can use the OP. And if we need more things, then you can use the HMI. Time is very short. Okay. The next part is the process instrumentation. Process instrumentation is the big part of the industry. And uh, what is inside the process instrumentation? If you go to India or different countries, if you go to different industries, process instrumentation, mainly hydraulic, pneumatic, valves and sensor. What is pneumatic? Pneumatic is something that is controlled by the air. Like if I have the compressor, so what I can do, I can compress the air. And if I have the compressor, then I can uh, run some cylinder or like this. Okay. So most of the industry, the uh, we have electrical line in the industry, same way we have also the pneumatic line, air line. So in here for the rotary motion, like this is the rotary motion, rotary motion, motor is the most popular, but when there is a linear motion, for the case of linear motion, we are using the uh, pneumatic system. Okay, so this is a pneumatic cylinder. You see, this is a pneumatic cylinder. So if I just uh, insert air from this way, from the compressor, uh, compressed air, so what will happen? This cylinder will go up, this piston will go, uh, up and if I just uh, push the air from this way and then the piston will go backward this way forward and this way backward and in, in our industry thousands of pneumatic cylinder is used in our industry so this is a just industry what happened so when we uh, uh, flow this way uh, this is the piston and this is the rod uh, so what happened this piston rod going this way, this way. And if I just enter the ER here, this will go this way. So what is pneumatic and what is hydraulic? So pneumatic and hydraulic, the concept is almost same. But for hydraulic system, we just insert the liquid, hydraulic oil here. But for pneumatic, we just insert the ER. So where we use the hydraulic system and the pneumatic system? Because you know, for the pneumatic system, if we use the ER, pneumatic, the characteristics, like uh, I'm showing you this air freshener. This is just, just air freshener. So what happened to air freshener? So there is high pressure air freshener is inside there. So if I just spread this air freshener, it will uh, cover all over the room. But it is it, it is inside this in a compressed way. That means it is the characteristics of a air that I can compress this amount of air to a small bottle. That is a that is a characteristic of Air. That means air can be compressed, but while we cannot comp while we can comp uh, compress, like this is the bottle of a water. So we cannot compress this bottle to a small bottle. That is not possible. But air we can compress. So when you compress the air, that gets the energy. With the with that energy, we can uh, operate this type of devices. But hydraulic uh, system, we are just using the hydraulic oil, and hydraulic motor is running all the time. So hydraulic motor is giving pressure, but from the hydraulic system, we are getting a lot of pressure, like uh, 50 bar, 70 bar, 100 bar, we can use the hydraulic system. But in the pneumatic system, we can only apply the pressure uh, 8 bar, 10 bar, 12 bar. So they are using the same principle, but hydraulic, we have the lot of energy. Like I'm giving you an example. Uh, okay, these are the most pneumatic part uh, of the industry. They are using in different industry, and these are the some pneumatic connections. Mm, they are the, uh, this is same like this. They are different, different. All this pneumatic system is controlled by the PLC. Okay, this is an example of a hydraulic system. And you, you see, these are the cylinder. These are the cylinder. You see this one, this is the name. This is called excavator. <coughs> in English, excavator. Uh, you see some places in construction places, this excavator is using. And uh, there, is, uh, there is the using hydraulic cylinder. And this excavator is using for the construction purposes. So there is a hydraulic cylinder, there is a hydraulic cylinder, there is a hydraulic cylinder. What happened? <clears throat> so if we just insert the hydraulic oil this way, this piston will go forward. And this way, this will go backward. So this way, this can control. The same way, 
uh, if uh, liquid is coming this way, this go up. When this way, this go down. And this way, uh, <coughs> this excavator is using. So this is the common uh, principle of hydraulic and uh, pneumatic. And in our industry, everywhere you will see the thousands of thousands of hydraulic and pneumatic system is there. And the next one, the valve. Valve. We are uh, uh, previously we are using the manual valve. If you go your roof uh, uh, rooftop, you will see there is a water valve, just butterfly valve. You can say that uh, you need to rotate it uh, uh, clockwise, anti-clockwise to stop the water flow. But uh, for the industrial valve, industrial uh, item, industrial machineries, we need the solenoid valve or we need the actuator valve. That actuator valve could be controlled by the PLC. Like I'm giving you an example of a valve. This is a water flow valve. Okay, what happened? And if I command from the PLC that just open 100%, then the valve will open 100%. And if I command the PA from the PLC, that will open 0%. If I command, it will open 50%. That means this valve is controlled by the PLC. Sometimes it could be controlled by solenoid and sometimes it could be controlled by pneumatic and sometimes high pressure valve, like while you, you were uh, working in different uh, gas industries, they have the high pressure valve. That high pressure valve, Sometimes you servo auto. So all this item is controlled by the PLC. And the sensor. There are thousands of sensors in our industry. Uh, I can say some, these are all, these are the sensors. There are a lot of sensors. There are 30 to 40 sensors. I'm showing you some sensor. This is the, uh, like these are the proximity sensor. And these are some other proximity sensor. They are using different uh, areas in industry, like a pressure sensor, flow sensor, all the sensor are using in the different industry. So in a short, because you know, I, my time is short already. Uh, so as I'm going on and I'm going to start very soon. So this is a short introduction of in your introdu uh, for industrial automation. So this is just a beginning. This is not the ending, this is the beginning. So today's class, my target was to make you understand what are the different industries and what are the different part uh, of the industry. So from, from, the, from the today's class, you will get some idea about the instrumentation that are using in the industry. And according to uh, our uh, today's lecture, if you can read more, because you know, nowadays there is no shortage of information because Google is there. If you just Google, Google anything, you will get huge idea about any items. So, uh, <clears throat> so one request to all of all the university students, because you have to open your brain, open your mind, and you have to open all the doors. Because uh, when you uh, when you just get out, when you're out from the university, you will see that lots of thousands of graduate engineers is there. But how I can make you different from others? That is you have to make something different. You have to do something different. You can get training of the PLC. You can get training of the AutoCAD. If you are electrical engineer, you can get some training of the AutoCAD. If you are CC student, you can get training on the CCNA. You can uh, some get training of the Linux. You can get training of the Oracle. That will make you different from others because you all are in the same platform. All are BS engineer, all are BS engineer. BS engineer, thousands of BS engineer that there. But if you do something and if you uh, get some training, that will make you different from the others. So uh, sometimes we heard uh, from some people and some students, uh, they say, sir, I have completed my graduation, but I'm not getting the job. So I just requested them because you hundred guys come to my office and I need only one guy. So how I can select? I have to, you have to open the door to select yourself. Yes, I, I know the PLC. Yes, I know the AutoCAD. Yes, I know the CCNA. Yes, I know the Linux. So that I can make you differentiate from others. And there is one wrong concept uh, in our uh, university student that I need actually uh, uncle to get a good job. That is actually a bad concept. That uncle and the relatives that is needed for the lower class job. Like if there is a uh, circular for a peon, or if there, there is a circular for a cleaner, <coughs> you see thousands of applications is there. So that needs some uncle relatives help. But engineering job, you have to prove yourself. Like few people come to our office. And some people say that, uh, brother, I'm sending one people, uh, just try to uh, and, uh, give, give the job to him. 
But what is my consideration? My consideration is that I don't know that guy. I need to select such a guy. Those guys can perform my office and perform my industrial automation tasks. But if you don't uh, don't know this, I know you're a fresher. You, you don't have such idea or such, such information. But from your level, how much you're trying, that is important. For example, like uh, if I, mean, I don't know which uh, year you are, if you are the final year student, you can do some projects on uh, PLC or microcontroller or other items so that you will get huge information. But what happened in a university, most of the university, like five group of people make a project, one people do everything, other four don't know anything. So what happened when I, we get CVs, because you are fresher, you don't have any uh, job experience. So what do you expect from you? So first we ask, what is your project? What are your projects? So maximum when I ask the, about the project or something, uh, we can think that he's actually, he was not doing the projects. Some of your friends, doing the project, he just make it copy paste and just uh, pass the graduation. So this should not be way. You just have to open your mind and open your ideas and open the, all the doors. So if you have a lot of doors, then you can uh, get the job and get the good opportunity very easily. Okay, so thank you so much. I'm taking our time and uh, we have a session uh, sometime. We have a session about uh, 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 around what is the job condition of Bangladesh, how to get good job and this session. And in the later, uh, if uh, you can arrange this such program, we can also deliver a speech on how to get a good job or what is the best way to good job. So thank you so much. Uh, today, I take a lot of time. Uh, now, I think our mentor, they can handle the other parts. And if you have any question, you can ask. I am just uh, giving permission, all of you to ask the question openly. Okay, now we can unmute your audio. Assalamu alaikum. <laughs> wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Yeah, I mean, Dhaka uh, Power Distribution, I mean, randomly, I have to give you a name. Okay, okay, okay. I mean, do you want to continue? Yeah, sure, sure, sure. We are all, oh. maximum okay, we are uh, Bangali. Some people may be from foreign. So, Bangali is okay. I mean, do you want to give you a 95 series? Thaka Power Distribution Company, I am a system protection executive engineer. In the industrial automation, I am a PDB, I am a DCS, I am a instrument control department. But I am a substation automation system. I am a just introductory class. I am a question. Our actor questions on Simati Quincy like this, it will seven point four to seven point four. Many Amar team K, Maniza State, a Jetu, Apner, the training near Kothabul Sending Corona Jagai. Amar at a group of Sam Rashole, Simati SCC, Jetahulu. ID, I want the relay J data gula, German Swiss gear control, Kuri, Amra, Swiss gear event gula control, Tarpore, tripping, everything. Control, monitoring, control, measurement, and um, monitoring. Just you know, WinCC is the mother software of the uh, SCC. SCC is like a library of the WinCC uh, that can read the um, uh, relay data. All the item is controlling by the PLCC and with the PLC, a SCADA is connecting and the SCADA software name of Siemens is WinCC. And WinCC, Achha. we have another version, WinCC 7.4 uh, is the latest version of WinCC SCADA and WinCC 11 is, the, is used to design the HMI. They are actually the visual part, uh, the WinCC, but WinCC is not controlling anything. WinCC just visualize what PLC gets. And from the PLC, WinCC is uh, displaying and uh, doing everything. But PLC is mainly doing everything. So you are using S7300 PLC, right? Or S7300? Yeah, our uh, data is the ID, the relay. The camera is the relay. The relay is the relay. The measurement, okay. control, and protection. This data is the IC6 and 8 part from the read. Okay. Okay. Actually, SCC is the IC6 and 8 part from the data. It is the WinCC. <laughs> Basically, SCC is not a case. It is internally OPC in the OPC server. It is not a case. 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 It is not a case
प्रथम कथा टाइम मोबाइल नम्बर Nice presentation. मतलब आपने क्या हम खूब भाल लगते थे इधर ने आपने exclusive. आमी अनेक दिन धोरे किन्तु आपने खुश थी, but आमी पाँच थी ना आपने शायद एक शो में हमारे कोथा हुई थी लो. जब उन यू आर जस्ट पासिंग द आपने जब उन पास करी बेर होने. आमी बीवन शो में देख लाम square area टी आपना कि आपने नाम सुन सी. आमदर एक तो interest आसे � গেটওয়ের মাধ্যমে 104 এ কনভার্ট করে আমরা এনসিসি ন্যাশনাল কন্ট্রোল সেন্টারে নাও হবে আর কি যেটা ডিপিডিসি এর জন্য আলাদা ভাবে একটা প্রজেক্ট ধন্যবাদ সবাইকে এবং আপনার প্রেজেন্টেশনের জন্য আবারো ধন্যবাদ আর আপনি রুয়েটে শুনে আরো ভালো লাগলো আবারো ধন্যবাদ ফর রুয়েটিয়া ওকে অন্যদেরকে বলতে বলতেছি না যে অন্যরা আবার মন খারাপ করবে যে রুয়েটিয়া এটা হলো আমরা যেতে একই ক্যাম্পাসে ধন্যবাদ আসসালামু আলাইকুম ওকে ইফ ইউ হ্যাভ এনি আদার কোশ্চেন so you can ask any questions uh, related to these or any other uh, items uh, i hope i can answer the questions because uh, we are around 7 to 8 years we are in the we are working in the different industries so if you have any question related to industries or related to electrical i hope i can help you assalamu alaikum i am aksarul islam aksarul islam acha bhalo achen na Yes, sir. Alhamdulillah. Okay. okay. You, you got the training from our institution, right? Yes. Yes. Um, okay, okay. Okay. Thank you so much for joining. Uh, uh, sir, amra kibabe ashole field de apply korte pare je PLC je ye program gollo. So ota shampon shampon ke jodi to bolte parten thale bhalo to je field de kothay kothay kaj gollo hoy. actually uh, all the industries they are using plc scada and dcs all the industries but their field is different 
the brother Shonukul Islam, he mentioned is DPDC. They are controlling the substation. Substation they are using also the SKR. So what's happened? Normally you can control the substation without PLC also. But if we use the PLC and SKR system, what what is the difference? We can say the feedback. We can control everything sitting here, and even we can control everything sitting in the remote places. So as a student, what you can do that uh, you can uh, if you have the opportunity to uh, do some projects. And if you, if your university, BOVT have some facility of SCADA and some facility of PLC lab, so that uh, you can take our help or any help from others company. And from their help, you can do some projects regarding this. And in that project, we help you to get job in the related field because all the fit, all the industry, they are using HMI, PLC and SCADA. So uh, that is one way that if your university has, because you know, these items are very expensive. If you want to make a project for the SCADA and the PLC, it will need more than two or three lakhs. That is uh, not enough. Uh, it, it, that is not uh, easy for a student to manage. So that can manage university. So if your university help you this way, uh, so few of our guys can training your teachers. And if you're some people guide to our training center, we can guide him. And that way, that the collaboration way, we can make a lab or we can help each other. That way you can help. And otherwise you can uh, come any training center and get some training regarding this. This is the only way. And there is some other ways. If you have no problem with the money, then you can buy some items. Like you, you just control your room with your SCADA system. That will give you a lot of ideas and a lot of information uh, about this SCADA system. You can do it. If you have some people I know at private university, they have uh, no problem with the money. They can arrange uh, from self-finance some item. So that way also you can uh, practice. And the final practice uh, will be when you join some company like this. Because actually uh, now the field is a wide variety of fields. Few electrical engineers working in the bank sector, few electrical engineers working in the power plant, few electrical engineers in the PDB, different, different things. Some like DPDC or PDB. So what PDB guys maximum doing? They are just max, maximum doing documentation work. But if a PDB guy is working in the plant, they can only take the flavor of the automation. The same way, and the, every and each industry, they have both the uh, documentation section, they have the all the section, and some they have the maintenance section. So if you uh, get a job in the related field, then you will get a lot of knowledge and a lot of experience on that related field. Before that, you just practice in your home, uh, in your lab, and you can also search uh, in the internet because you know there is a Siemens automation forum. You just search Siemens automation forum. That forum is a very strong forum. From that forum, you can get a lot of ideas about that. And if you go to the YouTube and search the SCADA, and if you go also get a lot of videos and everything, that also may help you to do, uh, make a good career. Okay, thank you so much. And if there are any other questions, you can ask any questions. Assalamu alaikum, sir. I'm going to ask a question. Yes, yes. I'm going to downtime dangerous term in PLC, SCADA, TCS, etc. We try to Bangladesh on the road. I'm going to say that I'm going to say blackout and numption. I'm going to say that I'm going to say blackout. I'm going to say that 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 i so, এখানে আসলে কি সমস্যাটা হয়েছিল যে এখানে সমস্যাটা এরকম হয়েছিল যে আসলে সামহাউ যে আমাদের যে আমাদের দেখেন বিষয়টা হচ্ছে এরকম মানে ন্যাশনাল লোড ডিসপার্স সেন্টার এনএলডিসি তো এনএলডিসি থেকে মূলত আসলে লোড ডিসপার্স করা হয় এবং আমাদের যে পাওয়ার প্ল্যান্টগুলো আছে পাওয়ার প্ল্যান্টগুলো কিন্তু অন ডিমান্ড যেগুলো गवर्नमेंट পাওয়ার চলে যেগুলো রেন্টাল দেখলে যেগুলো অন ডিমান্ড কিছু a NLDC DC by era will maintain correct. The account power planter power kin to another IPS motona. Jami IPS a power time gather kulam and the Tarpoyami IPS take a power takami supply. We should recommend Amar A Murte the light to Jolte say A light to electricity A Murte Kondakon a power plant with Kono. The account we should a camel hobby, Monogram Jamade Ekanamanaganje. হঠাৎ করে মনে করেন যে আমার এখানে লাগতেছে যে 1000 মেগাওয়াট বা আমার জানা যে 50000 মেগাওয়াট আমার পুরো বানাচ্ছি এখনই যে চেয়ে মুহূর্তে সো কোন কারণে মনে করেন যে অর্ধেক 25000 মেগাওয়াট শাটডাউন করলো তো 25000 মেগাওয়াটে শাটডাউন করে আমার কিন্তু লোড কিন্তু অফ হয়নি কারণ লোড শেডিং লোড শেডিং কখন দেয় 
যখন দেখা যায় না আমার এই সাপ্লাই কমে গেছে সাপ্লাই আমার এই পরিমাণ সাফিসিয়েন্ট নাই আমার আছে এত সাপ্লাই কিন্তু আমার লোড আছে এত তখন কিছু কিছু এরিয়াতে লোড শেডিং দিয়ে আমার সাপ্লাই এবং ডিমান্ড দুটোকে একটা ম্যাচ করে কিন্তু কখন যদি ইম্ব্যালেন্স হয়ে যায় হঠাৎ করে আমার অনেক গুলা প্লান্ট শাট ডাউন তখন কি কি হয় যে তখন বাকি পাওয়ার প্লান্ট গুলো আর সাপ্লাই দিতে পারে না কারণ আমার লোড আছে মানে কারণ যে এক লাখ এই ওয়াটের কিন্তু আমি দিতে পারছি পঞ্চাশ হাজার তখন বাকিগুলোকে বাকিগুলো লোডের কারণে শাট ডাউন করছে তো এইভাবে শাট ডাউন করতে করতে সমস্ত দেশ অন্ধকার হয়ে গেছে আচ্ছা এখন সমস্ত দেশ অন্ধকার হইলেই কিন্তু একটু আগে বলছিলাম যে পাওয়ার প্লান্ট শাট ডাউন ডেঞ্জার আছে এটা কিন্তু এক সেকেন্ড অন করা যায় আপনি একটা মেশিন অফ হইলে অফে চাপ দিলেন দু চার মিনিট একটা মেশিন অফ করতে পারেন কিন্তু একটা পাওয়ার প্লান্ট অন করতে হইলে আপনাকে এটার সিঙ্কোনাইজেশন ঠিক করতে হবে ফ্রিকুয়েন্সি ম্যাচ করতে হবে ভোল্টেজ ম্যাচ করতে হবে অনেক কিছু ম্যাচ করার পরে ফাইনালি আপনি গ্রিডে পাওয়া দিতে পারবেন তো এই জন্য কখনো কখনো সাত ঘন্টা আট ঘন্টা দশ ঘন্টা পর্যন্ত লেগে যায় একটা পাওয়ার প্লান্ট অন করতে আর একটা মজার ঘটনা আপনাদেরকে বলি আমরা গত কয়েক বছর যাবৎ একটা কথা শুনতেছি যে পঁচিশে মার্চ কালো রাতে এক মিনিটের জন্য ব্ল্যাক আউট করতে হবে এটা মানে আপনারা শুনছেন আরকি এটা হয়তো বা গভর্নমেন্টের কোন মানে ইঞ্জিনিয়ার এটা বলার কথা না এটা হয়তো বা মানে যার ইঞ্জিনিয়ারিং নলেজ কম এরকম কেউ হয়তো বলছে যে পঁচিশে মার্চ কালো রাতে বারোটা এক মিনিটে এক মিনিটের জন্য সারা বাংলাদেশ শাটডাউন করা করতে হবে তো একটাই জিনিস চিন্তা করেন এক মিনিটের জন্য কি বাংলাদেশ শাটডাউন করা সম্ভব এক মিনিটে যদি আপনি যদি সারা বাংলাদেশ শাটডাউন করে দেন তাহলে এটাকে আপ করতে চব্বিশ ঘন্টা লাগবে তার মানে এক মিনিটের জন্য কোনো কোনো কিছু শাটডাউন করা সম্ভব না তো এই বিষয়টা হচ্ছে এরকম যে একটা প্লান্ট কোনো কারণে প্রবলেম হইলে এটা ডেঞ্জারাস ডাউন টাইম হয় যেহেতু এখানে আসলে অনেক কিছু লাগে অন করতে এটা চব্বিশ ঘন্টা কখনো বারো ঘন্টা লেগে যায় তো এই জন্য আমরা যে স্ক্যাডা বা ডিসিএস যেগুলো কথাই বলছি এই কন্ট্রোলার গুলো কি এমন স্ট্রং হইতে হবে যাতে কন্ট্রোলারের কারণে কখনো আমার প্লান্ট শাটডাউন না করে হ্যাঁ হইতে পারে আমি কোনো একটা ইম্ব্যালেন্স তৈরি হয়েছে যেটা আমার হাতে তৈরি না যেমন এই যে যেটা কথা আমি বললাম যে ব্ল্যাক আউটের বিষয়টা ব্ল্যাক আউটের বিষয়টা আসলে পাওয়ার প্লান্ট হাতে ছিল না কারণ তার লোড শেডিং দিতে পারে নি আমি তো এনএলডিসি তো লোড শেডিং দিবে এখন আমি যদি হুট করে মনে কাজে ধাপাস করে মনে কাজে আমি বিশটা পাওয়ার প্লান্ট শাটডাউন করি তো ওরা কিন্তু ক্ষমতা নাই এত দ্রুত লোড শেডিং দিবে তো ও লোড শেডিং দিতে পারে নি পাওয়ার হিউজ শর্ট তো কি হবে একটা ইম্ব্যালেন্স তৈরি হবে তো এই ধরনের ইম্ব্যালেন্স তৈরি হতে পারে আমি যে একটা एग्जांपल দিলাম মনে কাজে আপনার স্টিমের আপনার ফ্লো নাই আপনার ওয়াটারের সাপ্লাই কমে গেছে কিন্তু আপনার স্টিমের ফ্লো আপনার কি বলে বয়লারে হিট ঠিক ঠিক মতো হচ্ছে তখন একটা ইম্ব্যালেন্স তৈরি হবে অথবা আপনার টারবাইনে কোনো একটা মেকানিক্যাল প্রবলেম হয়েছে যেটাতে টারবাইন সাউন্ড করতেছে বা টারবাইনে লুব্রিকেশন ঠিক মতো পৌঁছাচ্ছে না এই ধরনের মেকানিক্যাল ফল্ট এর জন্য আমার প্লান শর্টন করতে পারে বাট আমার স্ক্যাডা বা ডিসিএস সিস্টেম হলে প্রত্যেকটা মুহূর্তে আমরা এলাম পাবো এবং কোন পয়েন্টের প্রবলেমের কারণে আমার প্রবলেম হচ্ছে সেই এলামটা আমি এখানে বসে পাবো আর কি তো এটাতে আমাদের জন্য যেটা হয় আমাদের জন্য ট্রাভেল চেক করা ইজি হয় যেটা ম্যানুয়াল পাওয়ার প্লান্টে ছিল না ম্যানুয়াল পাওয়ার প্লান্টে প্লান্ট অফ হওয়ার পরে আমরা জানতাম যে প্লান্ট অফ হয়েছে বাট স্ক্যাডা বা ডিসিএস এগুলো আমরা ইনস্ট্যান্ট সব ডেটা আমরা পাইতে পারি আমি একটু সংযুক্ত করি দুইটা ডাটা कलो रिषय मंत्रालय मानी ट्रेनिंग <laughs> আমি 
যদি এরকম একটা গ্রুপ থাকে তাহলে এই টুলস গুলো আমি সবাইকে দিতে চাই আর সম্প্রতি রাষ্ট্রীয় সম্পদের একটা হিসাব করা হয়েছে তাতে অটোমেশনে কস্টিং এ অ্যাকর্ডিং টু কস্টিং অটোমেশন দেখলো যে যতদিন ম্যানুফ্যাকচারার তাদের ওয়ারেন্টি পিরিয়ড এর ভিতর থাকে ততদিন অটোমেশন থাকে তুমি যেটা বলছিলা যে আসলে যে আমাদের সাস আমরা প্রায় দুইশো কোটি টাকার সাস অলরেডি আমাদের সিস্টেমে নিয়ে আসছি বাট আমাদের অপারেটর আমাদের ইঞ্জিনিয়ারদের মানে এই টেকনোলজিটাকে আত্মীকরণ না করার কারণে এগুলা কিন্তু ইউজলেস হয়ে আছে ফোর মিনিট সেকেন্ডে যেই ট্রাভেল শুটিংটা আমি করতে পারবো অটোমেটিক্যালি সেটা আমরা ম্যানুয়ালি দুই তিন ঘন্টায় করি নষ্ট হয়ে যাচ্ছে তারপরে আমার আমাদের অন্যরকম কিন্তু এখন একটা Thank you so much, sir, for your enlightening presentation. I think the participants learned a lot today and will be much benefited by this workshop. Since we are reaching near the end of today's session, now I would like to ask Tahrim Fatiha, chairperson of IEEE IES DOPT student branch chapter, to express our perceptions about today's event. Thank you, Eva. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Uh, as we end today's event, I'd like to thank you all for joining the workshop. Uh, your presence today shows a strong commitment. In particular, I humbly express my sincere gratitude to the speaker for sharing his expertise with us. And also, I'd like to thank uh, my respectful teacher, Shamsul Ahmed for staying with us till the last moment and all of you for your active participation and open dialogue. I look forward to continuing and uh, beyond this event, the very stimulating and uh, instructive exchange of ideas we had today. So I trust that you all will take home further inspiration on how to foster the necessary change and, and thank you for being present here. That's all. Thank you so much. Now I am requesting to present the crest of appreciation for our honorable speaker. Uh, Thank you so much for the crest. This is virtual or real? Now I am requesting to show the certificate of appreciation. Sir, this is virtual. So, okay. so we don't have lunch or dinner now, right? <laughs> okay. 
thank you once again to all the honorable guests faculty members and students for your cooperation that is a must for all the time it's been a pleasure being with all of you today and again thank you all for your patience i wish you all a very good afternoon stay safe stay well and this is the ending moment of today's event thank you sir uh shafiq <laughs> islam sir uh are you there খুব সম্ভবত মাসুর ধন্যবাদ আর আমাদের দিক থেকে সাব স্টেশন অটোমেশন সিস্টেম অলমোস্ট ইন্ডাস্ট্রিয়াল অটোমেশন সিস্টেমের কাছাকাছি বাট আমার রিলেটা যে আইডি বলি আমরা রিলে বলি না ইন্টেলিজেন্ট ইলেকট্রনিক ডিভাইস সো আপনারা যদি ইন্টারেস্টেড থাকেন আমার ছোট্ট একটা ল্যাব আছে আমার অফিসের সাথেই যদি আমি সরকারি চাকরি করি আমাদের অতটা সময় হয় না বাট ফ্রম ওন ইন্টারেস্ট যেটা মাসুস বললেন যিনি আজকে প্রেজেন্ট করলো যে আসলে ডোর ইজ ওপেন সব ডোর ওপেন রাখতে হবে এবং আমি কোনটাতে কমফোর্ট ফিল করি আমার কোনটাতে ইন্টারেস্ট আছে ওই জায়গাটাকে আমরা যদি প্রফেশনালি নিতে পারি যে চাকরির জন্য চাকরি না ভালো লাগার থেকে নিজেকে প্রফেশনালি অ্যাপ্রোচ করলেই আমরা হয়তো আমাদের দেশকে এগিয়ে নিয়ে যেতে পারবো আমাদের যে যে অবস্থা নিয়ে কাজ করুক আলটিমেটলি আমাদের দেশ এগিয়ে যাবে তো মাসুর আমি আমি তার সম্পর্কে জানি সে ইজ ভেরি ফ্রম দ্য বিগিনিং তার ভিতরে এই ধরনের একটা কাজ করে সে স্কোয়ার বিভিন্ন জায়গায় আমি তার নাম শুনছি আর কি যদি আমি আমি এই লাইনে একটু চেষ্টা করতাম তো আমরা হয়তো যৌথভাবে যদি রিপিটিসিতে আসেন তাহলে আমাদের সিস্টেম গুলো আমরা দেখাইতে পারতাম অথবা আপনারা যদি আমাদের ইনভাইট করেন তাহলে হ্যাঁ তরুণদের সাথে কাজ করলে হয় তারুণ্যের যেই আভা পাওয়া যায় সেটা অবশ্যই পজিটিভ নিজেকে সেলফ এডিটিং এর জন্য যেটা সবচেয়ে বেশি কাজে লাগে আর সিনিয়রদের সাথে কাজ করলে যে সময় উপযোগী কোন বিষয়টা কি নিয়ে কাজ করতে হবে সেটা সিনিয়রদের কাছ থেকে পাওয়া যায় এই সময় কোনটা করতে হবে আর তরুণের তারুণ্যের যেই বিষয় সেটা তো আসলে আমাদের আইটির সাথে যারা সম্পৃক্ত থাকে তারা তারুণ্যকে ধারণ করে আমি মনে করি যদি আমি একটু সাহিত্য রস নিয়ে কথা বলছি তো তরুণদের কাছে হ্যাঁ আইটি সেক্টরটা মনে মনে করা হয় আমরা মনে করি আমরা যারা সিনিয়র যে তরুণদের জন্যই ভালো অবস্থানে যেতে পারবো আমরা ভালো অবস্থানে যাওয়া মানে আমাদের সমাজ ব্যবস্থা ভালো অবস্থানে যাবে আমাদের দেশ একটা ভালো অবস্থানে যাবে যেহেতু যুগটাই টেকনোলজির যুগ দেয়ার ইজ নো ওয়ে উইদাউট টেকনোলজি আমি আবারও সবাইকে অসংখ্য ভাবে ধন্যবাদ জানাচ্ছি এই ধরনের একটা প্রোগ্রাম করার জন্য এবং যারা জুনিয়র যারা মাত্র ইউনিভার্সিটি পাস করছেন ইউনিভার্সিটি থেকে পাশ করে বের হয়েছেন আপনারা এই মাসুর সাহেব উনি খুব মানে সাহেব বলবো না ও খুব এক্সপিরিয়েন্স ও দীর্ঘদিন ধরে ইন্ডাস্ট্রিয়াল অটোমেশনের উপরে কাজ করতেছে এবং এটাই এখন কার জন্য সবচেয়ে সময় উপযোগী টেকনোলজি দেয়ার ইজ নো ওয়ে সিমেন্স এর লাস্ট একটা ভার্চুয়াল একটা ইয়ে হয়েছে মিটিং মানে ভার্চুয়াল একটা মেলা হয়েছে ওই জায়গায় আমি দেখলাম যে কনভেনশনাল প্রোটেকশন যেটা নিয়ে আমরা সারা সারা পাওয়ার সেক্টর আমরা যে কনভেনশনাল প্রোটেকশন গুলো ইউজ করি ভবিষ্যতে এই প্রোটেকশন ইউজ করা যাবে না কারণ আমাদের এত পরিমাণ লোড হয়ে যাবে এত পরিমাণ জেনারেশন বেড়ে যাবে এটা মেনুয়ালি কন্ট্রোল করা নট পসিবল তো ধন্যবাদ মাসুর এন্ড এভরিবডি যারা নতুন এই যে জয়েন করছেন এবং আমাকে স্পেশালি কিছু বলার জন্য 
चोखे देखी